And with us now to continue our conversation is California Congresswoman Nanette Barragan, chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Congresswoman, always a, a pleasure seeing you. I thank you for your time. You and California Senator Alex Padilla issued a statement on the border talks in which you said caving to demands for changes to border policy as a price for a one-time spending package would set a precedent, a very dangerous one. What do you mean by that? Oh, thank you, Jose, for having me. Well, what I, we meant by that is uh, here we have a foreign aid package. It should remain just that. Uh, the White House should not be lumping aid uh, on the border and certainly not having conversations about changes to immigration as part of a foreign aid package. And I think it sets a dangerous precedent because then every time we're going to have foreign aid, Republicans are going to come right back and demand something else on immigration changes, uh, policy changes. And that is a dangerous precedent that we should not be allowing Republicans to make. And let's be clear, Republicans are holding hostage money, critical money that our allies need. Allies around this country, around the world rather, um, that are Democratic allies. Uh, so it's really remarkable to see Republicans say no to our allies. And they're doing it because of a political stunt. Uh, what they're proposing, the extreme immigration changes they're proposing, are not going to help solve the issues at the border. So the White House believed at the time, at least, that including discussions on uh, the border or certainly security around it would in some way make it easier to deal with the assistance to Israel and the assistance to Ukraine as well as in assistance to, to Taiwan. What is your understanding on where things stand with these talks right now? Well, my understanding is that the talks are at a standstill uh, because Republicans continue to ask for more and more extreme changes to our immigration system, um, and therefore they're not going anywhere. Uh, but again, I'm going to stress, I, I disagree. I don't think that we should be having a conversation on immigration changes in the same conversation of foreign aid. If they want to talk about actually doing something to solve uh, issues at the southern border. There's got to be a larger conversation on comprehensive immigration reform, looking at different angles, throwing more money at the southern border um, is one thing, but we're not even talking about we're not even talking about that right now. One of the things that Republicans aren't even supporting, they're not supporting making sure that there is more agents at the southern border, that there's more processing, more capacity to handle people. That what needs, that's what needs to happen. And they're saying no to all of that. They're saying no to even more ICE detention beds. It's, a, it's really a political stunt. I don't think they have any interest in really fixing what's happening at the border because they're using it as a political football to campaign on. This political football that has been used over and over again, Congresswoman, as you so eloquently uh, remind us, the last time there was comprehensive immigration reform in the United States was 1986. President Reagan was in the White House. It's just since then there has been no movement positive, there have been attempts, movement on anything comprehensive. And now, I know that you and your colleagues on the Congressional Hispanic Caucus have been trying to get a meeting with the president to discuss this. Have you been able to talk with the president or anyone at the White House on this? I have been in conversations uh, with somebody at the White House, not the president, uh, to convey the concerns that we have um, and to continue to request a meeting in person, something that is critically important. Look, we don't even have our CHC senators at the table, in the room, negotiating or having conversations, and that is completely unacceptable. Uh, so part of uh, the other uh, frustration that we have, of course, is uh, the lack of engagement, the lack of communication, and the lack of uh, making sure that we're at the table and having this conversation. There's no one on the Congressional Hispanic Caucus that is involved in any conversations in the House. There is no one, like, for example, even Senator Padilla, involved in any discussions and conversations in the Senate side. The only conversations are conversations that were actively, proactively, calls we're making and asking to be included. Uh, but nobody's coming and saying, hey, uh, would you be at the table? Would you be in the room? And you're talking about a senator who uh, is a point person in the Senate uh, on this issue, and he's not being included in making sure he's at the table. Uh, I have made various calls uh, to various people, including, you know, Senator Schumer of the White House, to express concerns about this issue as well. Uh, we need to have representation in the room, and we need to make sure that we're engaged, and right now that's not happening.
Congresswoman Nanette Barragan, it is always a pleasure. I thank you, Sarah, very much for your time this morning.